come on Baby, don't you wanna go Come on Baby, don't you wanna go Back to that lemon light city Sweet home Chicago Two, two is four Four, four, six Come on, baby, now get your business face Come on Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Your host, Avi Meyer, and the greatest cameraman of all, Sonny Hirsch. Thank you, Marty. Welcome, everybody, to the Northtown News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Watch our shows on the web. They're available on YouTube, at which point over 15,000 shows have been watched www.ntnm.org. Community policing, very important, something we want you all to get involved in. Sonny Hirsch, our entire technical crew, is the chairman of the 24th District Community Advisor, the District Advisory Committee, www.caps24.org. And of course, you don't have to do WW anymore. And speaking of the police and good stuff and things like that, somebody we haven't had the privilege of having on for a few months, um, the, now he's here, I think it's the, for the first time as the Sheriff of Cook County, uh, Sheriff Tom Dart. How are you? I'm doing great, Avi. How are you doing? First of all, good, thank you, and I'm so glad you were able to make it. Oh, I wouldn't miss it. I mean, I, I miss being on the show. I, I'm, thankfully, it's the first time in my career I'm not running every two years or something, so no election. I haven't seen you, so I was like, i got to get over here, even though there's no election, just to come by and say hello. No, I appreciate it. Actually, there were rumors about you in state, the state's attorney's office. Honestly, <laughs> God, I started worrying that the people working with me wanted to get rid of me so bad because they were the ones pushing it the hardest. But, uh, yeah, you know, I'd given it uh, some thought. Some people had asked me to consider it, but... The, uh, the job I have now, I absolutely love. We're doing tremendous things. And even though I used to be a state's attorney years ago, uh, you know, there's some very good quality candidates running now, and I'm sure the, the best person will rise out of that. Well, hopefully that'll work. That yeah. would work for me. Yeah, it's tough. You know, Dick Devine's been there for quite a while, and he's done a phenomenal job, but uh, he wants to go on to other things. Yeah, no, definitely. As a matter of fact, Dick Devine uh, lives about three blocks from here. Oh, really? And um, he has been our co-host. As a matter of fact, when we do our pre-election show live, about 10 days before the election, he is going to be co-hosting with Jim Nelly and myself at and the studio. You know what he is? He's one of those rare Northside Sox fans. Oh, uh, I know. Well, you don't hold that against him? N what, let's, th that's an Irish thing. As a matter of fact, Dennis, I don't know if you know Dennis Fleming at all. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Dennis, who, uh, and Dennis explained to me, basically, I didn't know Comiskey was Jew was Irish. Yeah. I was going to say Jewish because that's my side of life. <laughs> but he, you know, he basically, taught, the way he talks about Northside Cub fans, Oh. You know, he, he he does not like them, and he especially doesn't like <laughs> Irish Northside Cup fans. He feels every Irish person must be a White Sox fan. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, Divine, Divine is a partial season ticket holder. And yeah. Listen, I grew up in South Shore, so I've got downstairs in the basement. That's where I was born. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. 77th in Essex. 79th in uh, uh, Jeffrey, Merrill. I know where that is, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, as a matter of fact, that's, yeah, okay, that's on the way to the uh, old Avalon Theater, which is now Absolutely. the Regal. Exactly. That was a great theater. Oh, yeah, we, uh, it was there until I was like five or six years old. Yeah, the, well, I used to, when I went, it was like a 90-cent movie house where you could see all the Edgar Allan Poe stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a really <laughs> neat place. It's amazing. It's so beautiful. People don't uh, realize. I know. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. It really is. It really is. But yeah, you got a lot of elections going on up here, huh? There's a lot of elections. Yeah, well, we've got uh, Bernie Stone versus Iris Silverstein, which is going to be very unpleasant, I think. Yeah, the, the local ones always seem to turn out that way, you know, because you get so many people who are friends who are asked to go on one side or the other, and it, they make it, you know, it's very difficult for people. I, I'm happy that in the area I'm in right now, um, not just with me personally, but in the area I'm at, there's no real election battles going on locally. You're lucky. Yeah, I mean, you're not I was, kidding. I was really hoping for nothing like this, and the fact is that, that you know, Terry O'Brien and among other people really try to sit those two down and try to get them to work out a, some kind of compromise. Yeah, yeah, that's too bad. That's too bad. Well, hopefully it'll, things will work out. Well, I hope so, and I'm not going to say maybe the best man win. I happen to like both men. I just hope that no one's left too bloody in its wake. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I, I get the feeling there's going to be a couple of bodies to be mended heavily afterwards. <laughs> I know, I know. This whole election season, though, is getting so fascinating, though, with, you know, everything going on with Barack Obama and the rest of that. So, I mean, there's no, you know, telling how, you know, the dynamics are going to shift and change around here. Yeah, it's it's interesting to me because I know. Well, I guess he's the he's the favorite son, so to speak. Oh so. yeah, yeah. But you know, it's, with the the shifting of all the um, the primary schedules, it seems as if a lot of folks feel that by the time it gets around to Illinois, even though we moved ours up, that by that point, it's it's pretty much going to be assured who's going to be the nominees for both party, which is sort of a shame. But 
uh, you know, hope springs eternal, but the, the you know, pundits all think it's going to be decided already. Yeah, I think that is a shame, too. I'll agree with you. And not only will I agree with that, I think it's a shame also that all the all the art people have to run so early. Oh, I know. I know. It's horrible. I mean, for a lot of these people, they literally just got sworn in, like, like state reps, which I used yeah. to be. Yeah, you got to run every two years. They literally got sworn in in the first, second week of January, and here they are filing petitions. They started circulating in August, so mm -hmm. they were really on the job for eight months, and they're starting all over again. And that, that's that's tough. I mean, that's you know really not productive for people. No, not at all. Not to mention the fact that then we have nine months afterwards for everybody to say how bad the other guy is. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah, for those people exactly who have the general elections. Most of the time when I ran, I was in a district where it was primarily whoever won the primary, that was it. But for those who have both, that's tough. Yeah. That's really tough. Now, you don't have to worry about being a ward committeeman, at least. <laughs> Thank God. I tell you what, that's a job that I have never had any interest in, and to this day, I don't, and it keeps, the reasons keep adding up as to why I don't want to do that. No, you're very smart, and, and it's not what it used to be either, because you don't have the power, you don't have the patronage. No, but you still have the expectations. You know, they, they, you don't have either of those that you just mentioned, but yet there's still many, many people who feel that the committeeman still has the ability to do all these things, and it's just not the case. No, not at all. People, people. You know what? Now, now that we're more, com uh, com the world's more computerized and internet-wise, um, some some of Bernie Stone's opposition goes on the web. I, I've actually turned most of those sites off because it's not even being objective anymore. There's so much stuff on the web that's just plain mean. Well, you know, and it, uh, there's nothing informative about any of it. You know, that's where. To say, you know, thank God we don't have censorship. You know, but th not that they'd ever censor a show like this. You know, the, we, not you know, worried about that. <laughs> oh no, no. Uh, but 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 you, you, at some point, you really wish that the dialogue would raise itself up quite a few notches to where you had more intelligent conversation about issues and about that, as opposed to, as you said, you get into the internet and you get some of these sites that are just plain old nasty, and then they try to to they don't even pretend to tell the truth, but they do it in such a a very devious way. It looks as if this is all factual evidence when it's not. No, not even close. And, no. um, it's really the look. You know, what's amazing to me, like over here, usually it used to be like the incumbents that were always suspected of being the really devious, evil yeah. people, but this time it's actually the challengers yeah, yeah. who are more, or more devious than the incumbents. Well, you know, people, when they get desperate, desperate people will do desperate things, and so they'll say these things. And with the availability and the inexpensive nature of the Internet, um, that seems to be where a lot of these people have found a home. And it's a shame. As I say, there's tremendous Internet sites that are incredibly informative, but then you have this whole other slew that you're talking about that's just, it's really tough. Yeah, you know, that, that's actually been a problem here locally on a different matter because with community policing, I mean, there's a couple of them around here, and I, they're more gossip posts yeah, and yeah. actually very poor gossip posts. Yeah. And what's, what's worse to me is that people... If people think they're really contacting the police by posting something on some internet site that the police, the police have nothing to do with it. There's one in my camp's district that have nothing to do with, with not just the police, they have nothing to do with me or anybody else who actually, you know, chairs the meetings or anything. And I won't even look at it. I refuse. I haven't signed up for it. I don't look at it. But I am afraid that regular people, because I've seen what happens at, at, at a different site, I'm afraid that regular people are going to think they're being in contact with the police and informing the community, and they're not. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a shame because uh, is, 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 you've been involved with community policing all these years, and it's such an effective tool. As a matter of fact, we're starting that in our office. We're we're having a much more aggressive community policing a aspect that we're going to have out in suburban Cook County. You know, Chicago has Chicago down pretty well. We're going to try to mimic a lot of that out in the suburban communities and try to do some of the community policing, but. Uh, it is amazing when you go to these meetings how there's the whole rumor mill and so little of it really ties into some of the reality. And it's it's good to be there to dispel a lot of that, but you sit there and wonder how many people have perpetuated this and they're starting to live in some somewhat of a little bit of a fantasy world where you know all these things are going on when that's just not the case. But it, in the same sense, we get so much valuable information from our community policing. Yeah, that's true. And, the, and one of the things, well, the community policing itself, one of the things people coming to the meetings get to hear is what really happened and what didn't. Yeah, yeah. I know. And it is, it's sort of nice, too. But the, the sad thing is, and I, you know, I can't speak, obviously, for the, the, the CAPS meetings that yourself and other people involved in, but it, it, it seems as if we need to get more people showing up at these meetings because then you would have a much greater um, knowledge, the, the community would, about what's the reality and what's, you know, fantasy. Well, that would be nice, but, you know, there's, there's a catch-22 to this also because if, if more people show up, usually it's incident-driven. Really? 
Yeah, for instance, in this neighborhood, we uh, we had these famous 1999 July 4th. You know, the same guy that killed Ricky Birdsong, the Northwestern coach, yeah, yeah, yeah. the white supremacist guy. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but he basically was shooting up like within a, a two or three blocks of here. I recall. And there were seven people from this area that got shot. Now, my meetings were on the fourth Wednesday, and that was July 4th. So my meeting was three weeks later. There wasn't a single person that showed up because of those shootings. Really? It was that far gone. Wow. There, there, there were, like, you know, uh, some of the politicians held, like, like extraordinary meetings in the community, which actually didn't accomplish anything. Yeah. But, um, well, a certain congresswoman. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it just, nothing came of it. I mean, basically she held a meeting and everybody went, ooh. Yeah, but it, see, it was a one-time incident. But, but see, I've point, heard that, that that's mm. the case, though. Is that once, and you see that though, once the incident is no longer fresh in someone's mind, it falls off the radar screen, and people go back to, you know, what is the normal life, which is nice to do that. But the same sense to have the community policing being really vibrant, you really have to have the involvement of people. Well, actually, this summer we started to get a pretty good crowd. There's a lot of renters not far from here, and that brings in people that uh, it's a different crowd that's renting right now in this neighborhood. I was driving and, around the neighborhood on the way before we got here. A yeah. lot of really neat people, and you could tell it's like you know very. The, the area is different, definitely different than the south side, that's for sure. Oh, no question. As a matter of fact, our minority group here are white Christians. Really? <laughs> God. <laughs> the, um, I, by the way, actually, that's not technically true, but it could be. Yeah. Um, but one of the things is that if an incident, we, we had a big crowd for community policing during the summer. And what happened is that, that some of the new people that moved in uh, were coming from different places. Some were Section 8. It's not usually a Section 8 crowd. And by the way, most Section 8, just so people know watching, Around here are senior citizens, more than 50% of the... Se so people have a very bad misconception of what Section 8 is. Mm -hmm. But some, some of this are people that, that used to be in CHA projects and all the rest of it that are being spread throughout the city. There was not any real gang problems, so to speak. There wasn't any real physical violence problems. But there was a lot of rude speech and threats. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, the potential is the summer was going to start for something going wrong. What the commander did here is he's got a foot patrol team. And he had the foot patrol start walking up and down the blocks over here. And that calmed everything down. And that was in large part because over 35 residents showed up to a community policing meeting. And see, that's what we try to do with ours, is trying to be proactive, get out in front, and try to stop stuff before mm. it gets to be an issue. And that's the only way to do it. So it helped a lot. You know, there's no question that that being a quality of life issue, attacking that before it degenerated into a crime problem, mm -hmm. really solved things. But by the way, then what happens is that nobody's showing up to camps meetings again. <laughs> yeah, you've done such a good job. No one shows up anymore. That's right. Well, I do. what I did start is I have an email thing. Mm -hmm. And I've got about 97 or 98 people right now that get the regular meeting notices. Yes. And it's something particular. So I'm, I'm trying to keep people in touch that way. That's great you're doing that, though. It's, it's tough to get people as engaged as you are in this stuff. Well, it's, um, well, I, I, yeah, thank you. I wish we could get you out in the suburbs. You could help us and go a long way there. Um, yeah, I'm available. We'll talk. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll put you out in retail. We'll talk, but you know what? We don't have a lot of time left. And, and let's talk about, you know, now you've been doing, now, first of all, you're showing people who you are, which I like. It's very good. Um, you, you've done a whole bunch of stuff in the suburbs. We don't have time to get into more than one or two. But, you know, you've definitely made the news, made, uh, the news more than a couple of times. Uh. Yeah, we've been real aggressive. We've been doing a lot of things out in the suburbs that have been really unique and pretty interesting, uh, trying to uh, mimic, once again, some of the things that Chicago has done so successfully by being proactive, going analyzing data to try to target gang activity before they strike. We're doing a lot of stuff in our jail as well, trying to go after some of the violence in the jail. And then from a business standpoint, we've been uh, being incredibly conservative with our budget and watching all of the, um, the money very carefully and making dramatic cuts in our overtime and everywhere else to try to deal with. I mean, just good management, frankly, but also because we have a budget crisis as well. Yeah, no, as a matter of fact, I uh, appreciated your stance very much on the budget matters. Uh, yeah, it was it was tough times there for a while. It was a heck of a way to walk into an office to find out that they want to cut your budget about 20%. Yeah, no, 20% is... And, and you're talking about, you know, like some of this county stuff, okay, I can see, but, you know, things like law enforcement, the state's attorney's office, that kind of gives me a problem. Yeah, I mean, we literally <laughs> were looking to, to cut 100 police officers, uh, 200 and some deputies, and, and I mean, truly, uh, is there some fat in everyone's budget? Sure, there is, but... Not to the level that they were cutting. So we, we fought it, and by and large, we prevailed. We're hoping that the coming budget is not going to be as contentious and we'll be able to get some, some good things done. Uh, but, you know, we never know where it's going to go.
No, as a matter of fact, the uh, county situation, right now the whole situation with the state government and with the county government, uh, and I'm not talking about your part of county government, I'm talking, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hear you, uh, Mr. Kapoor is going to come on today in the show, too. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, well, for people who don't know, we, we do three shows usually in a day, sometimes four, oh. and um, as a matter of fact, I want to thank you very much for that. Uh, he's going to be on together. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, uh, he's going to be on together with this segment with Jim Nally. It's a question of uh, working things out, and I try to to even things out. Uh, as Smith, our second guest, stick around, is going to be Alderman Ed Smith, who's running for recorder of deeds. But yeah, why don't you tell us, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kapoor? I'm, I'm, I'm excited you got someone of his stature on your show because he is a very influential man in the Indian community. Done a lot with the highway department. I know whenever we had flooding, we would always call him up to. They develop a lot of plans and help us with that, and he's been very influential there and. Back in his own country too, it was you know very known there in the science community. You know, I, you know I had one of our guys telling us he was also in, quite a dancer too, but I don't know about that, <laughs> Mr. Kapoor. Um, but uh, he's a fantastic guy. You're really enjoy hearing from him because really tied into his community. No, that I'm looking forward to. And um, at this point, I guess uh, Mickey's hands are starting to get in the right direction. <laughs> oh, hey, well, did he, thanks so much for having me on, though. Well, first of all, my was, pleasure. And uh, you know, feel, first of all, feel free. You know. Uh, Brian, first of all, I want to thank Brian Town very much for getting in touch with me. Brian's always a terrific help. And I also want to thank Karen. Uh, Katie. Katie. Sorry about that, Katie. Um, and and our drive, Lonnie. Our driver. And Lonnie. We want to thank all of you for uh, helping bring uh, the sheriff here. And uh, uh, stick around for segment two. And if you want to get in touch with, um, well, I guess in the right place, if you call 911, you get in touch with. Yeah, uh, we pick it up in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> or you can always visit him in 26th and Cal, but don't go through the jail side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, you might get lost. We don't want that. No, no, not at all. I'll tell you a story about that right away. But anyway, thanks so much. And uh, segment two, guys. Thank you very much, Sheriff. Right. Thank you okay, so much. Thanks. Bye.